Hello, folks. Welcome to a brand new episode of Smoke 'em If You Got 'em. The premise of the show is very simple. There's a record. We listen to it. Side A, side B. Before you hit play or you drop down needle on it, the first thing you got to do is roll one per side. Listen and listen to us. Let's discuss it. And then we do it again. Now, for today's choice, I got my partner in crime, the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah Charlton. Applause, 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 applause. More applause. Calm down, folks. Applause. Way too Thank much you. applause. People are rowdy tonight. Oh, uh, you know, I think they've been drinking. It's weekend. It is a freaking weekend. We're listening to Franco Batatio. That's, that's pretty good, yeah. Pollution. Franco, ba- Franco Batiato from 1972. Batiato, Batiato. Pollution. Pollution is the, uh, the record you can find this anywhere. Look for yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, before we go down the road, you want to give uh, the fine folks, the very good-looking crowd listening to us here, uh, some no. notes before we go down this rabbit hole. This is our first Italian prog rock. That Thank God. Across. Finally, we move away from super European music. So <laughs> we, got, we got that going on, and um, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are. All right, I'm, I'm down. Now, uh, folks, you know the deal. Drop what you're doing. Focus on the record. Take Put a journey with us. Put the phone down, and um, and let's uh, let's Smoke listen up. to Frank Franco Battiato, Pollution, nineteen seventy two. Right, let's go to side A. Oh, this is really cool. This is a really cool album. I never heard this album before. This is uh, to give a little bit of context. It does sound like nineteen seventy two. Lots of big retro vibes with the synthesizers and mm. the long form. Uh, this 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 side could almost be one long piece. Um, it sounds like that almost. There there is distinct moments, but it is one long piece. And uh, Phil Manzanera, you know, all these guys at certain points, Terry Riley, all of it comes through. But it comes through Jean Michel Jarre. All that happens through synthesizers in a small studio. Uh, but the other definitely sets out to like create music that he's never heard before. And um, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, did you have a, uh, my favorite moment was uh, track three, Arc Names. Yeah, Eric mine Nam was, is. yeah, mine was, mine was Beta. Oh, there you go. Beta is I like Eric Namas too a lot though, too. I like, yeah. I like that one too a lot. Cause it's cool. Like, Cause it has like the, um, the, uh, the melody they play it like with the synths first and it comes back in heavy with the guitars, you know? Yeah. Which is nice. It's it's super nice, and and this is a rocking band. I mean, this this is a rocking band. This is a, this is a quartet. Uh, all the stuff is written by by Franco, but honestly, it's um, it's super rocking. It's super of the time. It it has the warmness of Lucio Fulci's music from the seventies. That's the songwriter and the composer that did most of the music for Daddy Argento and all the classic Italian horror with Mario Bava, all them guys. It has that precise sound of a zombie and, and that sort of stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take notes down and go check it out because it's definitely worth your time. Um, so give us some notes on the record. What I liked about uh, Beta was that, like, the drums drop. Yeah. Like in a really sort of like funky regular four, four beat, but it's, it's good. It's, it's heavy and it's a good juxtaposition because it's a pretty song on, on top. And then you have this drum sort of funk groove here. And then they got the strange noises slash synths underneath. Yeah. Making some weird sounds. So that, that's why I like that one a lot. Um, there, was, there was a lot of UFOs, cosmic stuff in terms of the sounds and the sound effects, a lot of tape music. So in between these like standard rock tunes or whatever, you get these extended jams that kind of like really push away. And you're right. The drums are super funky for what it is. And it's a mm-hmm. great it's a great journey. Right. The, the album starts very slow and mellow, yes. very quiet. It's almost painting this 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 atmosphere. And then it hits you like a ton of bricks, like pretty damn fast. Now, I, I want to point out that Arik Namis has, uh, it sounds like Italian, but it's not Italiano. It's, it's, it's half made up. It's, uh, mm. It has tendencies of Latin and it has Italian, but it's not quite 
exactly that. So another threat adding us on to the magma cloud and Christian Vander in creating not only your own music, but your own language and your own uh, universe, really. Um, let's flip this over. Let's check out the, the B-side. Let's do it, folks. Now, remember the rules. Smoke another one. Smoke another one. Stop being a wimp. Don't, yeah, it's, you're, it's you're, you're only really cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself. To, you're to, hurting your experience in the end. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, do the extra rep. Don't be wild. It's, it's always good. Don't so do wild. that and come back and let's let's talk about side two. Side two, yeah. And uh, by the way, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about Franco Battiato, Pollution, Pollution. 1972. Go go and check right. that out, all right? And uh, we'll see you in a second. Smoke if you got him. All right. All right, so this this is the favorite. This is my favorite side. This is my favorite side. It's a steady buildup, and we're still building on the A side of this uh, album. Uh, Italian prog rock at its finest. Um, can we talk about the artwork? Beautiful artwork. Yeah. Um, this album is not cheap for original pressing. Uh, cheapest one I found is like 120 euros. Ooh. So and all big the way demand like for it. 320 euros. So that's like almost 600, uh, like 500 something bucks Canadian where I am. So it's like yeah. 400 bucks American. Yeah, it's not cheap, folks. Um, you, there, there are represses though. So if you want to uh, live the life of a normal human being, get a reprint. Yeah, I think fun. I think this record. I think this record. Uh, you know, the experience of putting of listening to the album like vinyl format. Uh, there's certain albums that really benefit from the crackles and the pops and like that that warmness of the of, of, of the vinyl, and yes. uh, the version the version I heard was exactly those beautiful moments, and the build up here, uh, you know, for me, side A has a lot um, very sparse, and uh, these long forms sort of like it's just this one song that has three parts, but you can you have all the tastes of of what of what about the other was trying to create here because you get that percussive guitar that comes in and out you get the sound effects that come in and out you get these like uh it's a vcs you know synth it's uh for, for synth heads it's the classic analog and uh he's just trying to create sci-fi sounds not exactly notes it's just sci-fi sounds but in this side we have full songs using every single one of those techniques that we just heard before did it feel you like the, you, like you got the you? one the one catchy song very italian by the way yeah yeah and and but the other comes from pop music as well you know so it, it makes sense that you got those things but but I, I don't think it hinders that whatsoever this is a short record right this this record is yeah, very short i like the last the last uh, song you know like you're talking about that that uh, that synth you know yeah he was going for almost like uh it's the same synth the guy from Popple View uses for him. Yeah. Trick. Yeah. Right. They were so, going for that uh, that that's that would be the last track is T say Mike, yes to quale funzione high. Now and uh, uh, really good. Popple View fans, don't freak out. I said like Florian Frick. I didn't say it's better than Florian Frick. Because I know what happens when you upset the Popple Vu people. Uh they they throw their ARP cars at you? No, no, no. No, it's like uh, if you mess the process church. <laughs> Go look for it. Yeah. Um, this album, uh, aside from drums, has great timpani sections and, uh, and great practical effects. And practical effects, for those people who don't know, it's uh, not a digital sample. It's actually somebody clanging and banging on a wire to create that sound. Um, there is also, the, the rest of it is really traditional instrumentation. There's no, um, there's no brass or anything like that. The synths cover the biggest part of, of this whole thing. And then there's vocals in this record, as we talked before, and I didn't mention who the vocalist was, but, but Batiato is the vocalist for, for this album, Pollution 1972. I think uh, this is probably the, one of the easiest to listen to or the easiest listening album so far for... for... Most accessible. Yeah, most that's, that's the right term, most accessible, because it's, it's, it's quick, too. It's like 33-minute album. Yeah. Nothing, nothing too strange. And even the um, longest song is not something that's demanding that you – it's just not demanding. It's a record that goes by pretty pretty quickly. I think the smartest thing was to create blocks of music, right? So you have block A and block B that not necessarily um, 
have to be one thing, but they could be one one piece of music in its entirety. You know, it's a 33 minute long song um, with pieces in the middle. But I, I, I really love this record. This was a great record and um, I'll do my best to find a copy of it. Yeah, we've um, I, the, I can't even talk right now, but I was try, thinking about then you do it the thought, right way. Um. Well, let me see. Let me open my mouth and let me think about and actually uh, say the words. Get the words out. Get the words out. Okay. The words in my brain were uh, a friend of ours was listening to a previous episode where we talked about uh, orgasm. uh, That album. Yeah. And it it was too weird for him. It was too weird. Cro-Mags. Cro-Mags. Cro-Magnon orgasm. And uh, this this is, this is, this is the other side of town. Yeah. This, this might be our, that's probably our harshest one so far. This is probably our easiest one so far. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go back to the darkness tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I think um, a, a, something of note that I wanted to to put down for this album in particular, because it's like, even though it's one piece uh, and there's a big sounding band, it's pretty minimalist, minimalistic, easy for me to say, minimalistic in terms of, you know, it's pretty traditional, um, instrumentation uh except for the organ the organ especially in italian music because it's so steeped in religious uh in religious funk um and not in the funky way but just that stench of religion uh it always <laughs> comes comes up ominous and creepy and death-like and uh in this record it definitely has it as well well the more you listen to italian prog like keyboard runs the show Italian yeah, prog. yeah, the the keyword is, and and that has a lot to do with the with with the uh, Italian. Everybody growing films, up playing you know? classical music, and 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 I think one of the biggest exports, which is Italian horror cinema, it's just the sound. It's the sound of it, you know. Um, like I said, music for the films of of Dario Argento and Mario Bava. It's just it, that's just what it is, and the sound that a lot of people want to get. But that church organ is so Italian. They get all that. They get all that opera. They get all that. All that very much that. so. That's so actually that's one of my favorite uh, Dario Argento movies. Opera. The um, I was going to tell people is we've gone through a lot of little subgenres. We've gone through Zool, yes, right. We talked about that with Dune. We talked about um, what else? We talked about oh, the Canterbury sound, of course. Yeah. Right. Uh, the our rock and opposition. Yeah. With the art bears. Right, so we're trying to hit all of the Japanese. We went, we went to the Japanese side, you know. Yeah, the but but prog. that's one of the beautiful things about Prague. It's that it's just again not a single straight line. There's so many sub genres that we still have uh, yet to go through, you know. And because um, yeah. we haven't even talked about symphonic Prague or like even tech Prague or any of those things, um, and and modern Prague when you get into the math box shit. But again, that's the beauty of this thing and. Uh, you know, listen to this album. It's really good. Try to find a copy for yourself. Franco Battaglio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Franco Battiato. Battiato. Um, Sorry, Battiato. Pollution, Pollution is the uh, name of the album. The year is 1972. Um, there's plenty of them around. And if you want yourself uh, an original copy, it'll run you a couple of dollars. That's right. Dig but deep. think but think about the Oracle and, uh, and show them your respect because that's, that's just right. what it is. Uh, as I look at the time, walk us out. Folks, thank you for joining us on the journey. And tomorrow we will go again for another edition of Smoke Them If You Got Them. Deuces.